and so forth. It looks like an ordinary comet. It behaves like an ordinary comet. And except for these uh, a few anomalies, it, it does act like an ordinary comet. And so I think it's really pointless to preserve secrets to keep things away from the American public. The public want to know. Uh, Abiloa was very careful later on to say that the probability of his speculations are quite low. And so we have to put this into perspective that these are guesses and as a consequence, they're not 100%. In a stunning intellectual blow, world-renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku has just shattered the alien mothership theory consistently championed by Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb regarding the interstellar object 3i Atlas. But his counter-explanation isn't a retreat to a simple, it's just a comet model. Kaku's conclusion is, in its own way, even stranger and more profound. He posits that we are not looking at a new, sophisticated machine, but at an ancient cosmic ghost, an object he calculates that could be 7 billion years old, a wanderer that has passed through the graveyards of countless dead star systems, and its strange, anomalous properties are not signs of its own engine, but of the billions of years it has spent accumulating their dust, their gas, and their garbage. This is a very old object, perhaps 7 billion years old. And in 7 billion years, there's been a plenty of time to accumulate garbage. That's why, for example, the nickel content of the comet is off scale. Its chemical composition is not what an ordinary comet should be. And that, I think, is because over 7 billion years, it's had plenty of time to ac accumulate different gases, different elements, different kinds of environments that it goes into. This is the new paradigm, the rival theory that now threatens to collapse the entire techno-signature case file. According to Dr. Kaku, we have been misinterpreting the evidence. This object's bizarre composition, the high nickel to iron ratio that Elon Musk saw as the fingerprint of a factory-grade alloy, is not the sign of its own construction. Instead, it is the elemental ash and industrial debris of other long-dead civilizations it has picked up over a journey that began before our own solar system had even formed. He argues it's an ancient wanderer, a cosmic garbage collector, that has become a chemical Frankenstein's monster, containing materials from so many different environments that no longer resembles anything we would consider natural. Under this radical new model, every single anomaly that pointed towards technology suddenly has a plausible, albeit mind-bendingly exotic, natural explanation. The paradox of the tail-less comet? Dr. Kaku suggests that after 7 billion years, its surface layers of volatile ices have long since boiled away, leaving a denser, more metallic object that outgasses differently from the younger 3-4 to four billion year old comets native to our own system. The powerful ghost engine and the complex set of jets observed by Avi Loeb? He counters that these could simply be the final sputtering out gassing events from pockets of ancient volatiles or the result of a piece of this brittle, ancient object breaking off under the sun's intense stress, powerful, but not a sign of controlled propulsion. It is not an engine, it is the dying breath of a cosmic artifact. With this single powerful counter-narrative, Michio Kaku has reignited the scientific debate and forced us to ask a new question. Are we looking at an alien, or are we looking at a ghost? The rest of this video is the story of this new intellectual war, a point-by-point -point battle between two of the most profound ideas in human history. The first and most critical point of contention is the very substance. On one side, we have the technological hypothesis, a powerful synthesis of the ideas of Elon Musk and Professor Avi Loeb. Their argument is built on hard data. Spectral analysis confirms the object is unusually dry with less than 4% water, yet rich in metals including a nickel to iron ratio that simply does not match that of a natural comet or asteroid from our own solar system. Musk, the industrialist, saw the signature of factory-grade alloys. Loeb took it a step further, arguing that the object's ability to survive interstellar travel and its perihelion passage required something more advanced, a trans-industrial material, an engineered substance with properties like self-healing. In this view, the composition is the blueprint of the machine itself. On the other side stands Dr. Kaku, with his ancient wanderer theory, which is equally profound. He agrees the composition is bizarre but attributes it not to the object's origin, but to its journey. 
A seven billion year old object, he argues, would be a cosmic time capsule. It would have passed through countless stellar systems, including nebulae from primordial stars rich in heavy elements. It would have flown through the expanding shockwaves of supernovae and bedding itself with their unique isotopic shrapnel. Most poetically, it could have passed through the shattered debris fields of ancient long-dead planets and their technological civilizations, slowly accumulating their garbage, the trace elements of their alloys, the dust of their cities onto its surface over countless millennia. In Kaku's model, the object is made of artificial materials, but they are not its own. It is a natural object that has become encrusted with the artificial remnants of others. It is not a spaceship. It is a cosmic ghost ship, passively carrying the fragments of forgotten worlds. This single elegant hypothesis provides a powerful naturalistic counterargument for the object's impossible chemistry. It forces us to decide, are we seeing the fingerprint of its own technology? or the fingerprints of the many ghosts it has collected along its unimaginable journey. The second great battle is over the object's movement. For the Loeb camp, this is the most damning evidence. We have a string of kinematic anomalies that defy any simple natural explanation. The perfect Oberth maneuver at perihelion, the sunward jet of resistance, the continuous acceleration without a tail, and the sudden appearance of a complex multi-directional set of jets. To them, this is the unmistakable signature of a controlled, multimodal propulsion system, a ghost engine that can switch from a stealth mode to an active one. Dr. Kaku urges extreme caution. He argues that these observations, while strange, are not a definitive smoking gun for technology. An ancient object, he proposes, would be fundamentally different from the comments we are used to. Its seven billion year history could have created a highly uneven composition. What appears to be a controlled burn, he suggests, could simply be the violent outgassing of a deep pocket of ancient, highly pressurized carbon dioxide or other volatiles finally being exposed to the sun's heat. The multi-directional jets could be the result of a small, unobserved fragmentation event. A piece of the ancient, brittle nucleus breaking off, sending the main body into a complex tumble and exposing multiple new surfaces to sublimate at once. To Kaku, attributing this to an engine is a premature leap of faith. He maintains that natural explanations, while exotic, are still on the table. He famously stated that the smoking gun would not be movement, but a clear, unambiguous communication signal. E.T. phoning home with a mathematical code. As long as the object remains silent, he argues that any movement, however strange, can still exist within the realm of unknown natural physics. The central conflict is therefore one of interpretation. Are we witnessing a series of perfectly timed, controlled maneuvers from a sophisticated engine? Or are we witnessing the chaotic, unpredictable death throes of an ancient object as it finally succumbs to the heat of a star? While these two intellectual titans may stand on opposite sides of the ultimate question, there is one area where they are in absolute, unequivocal agreement. The institutional behavior surrounding this object is unacceptable. Both Avi Loeb and Michio Kaku have publicly criticized NASA's refusal to release the high-resolution photograph taken by the high-rise camera on October 2nd. Loeb has argued from a position of scientific necessity that the data is essential for solving the mystery. Kaku approaches it from a position of public trust, and his words are a powerful indictment of the current situation. Sounds like NASA is hiding something, right? I mean, what have they got to lose? It's only a sheet of paper. It's not like a top secret thing you put in a safe. It fosters more and more speculation, and at a certain point, it becomes counterproductive. This shared frustration from the two leading public voices on this topic proves that the information war is real regardless of the object's ultimate origin. The refusal to release basic scientific data has created an information vacuum, forcing both camps, the alien theorists and the exotic nature theorists, to work with incomplete evidence. It is a policy that serves no one, fueling the very speculation it is likely intended to suppress. The arrival of Michio Kaku's powerful counter-narrative has fundamentally changed the public debate. The world is no longer presented with a simple choice between a boring rock and an alien spaceship. We are now faced with two profound, mind-bending, and equally extraordinary possibilities. Possibility A, the Loeb-Musk paradigm. 
The object is a technosignature, a probe from a non-human intelligence. Its properties are the result of its own advanced engineering, its trans-industrial materials, its multimodal propulsion system, its water-cooled reactor. In this reality, we are witnesses to the first confirmed contact, a discovery that will change human history, philosophy, and religion. Possibility B, the Kaku paradigm. The object is a natural artifact of an almost unimaginable age. It is a seven billion year old cosmic wanderer, a chemical ghost carrying the literal stardust of systems that died before our sun was born. Its bizarre properties are not its own, but a library of the cosmos it is collected over an eon. In this reality, we have discovered an object that is, in its own way, just as precious, a messenger from a time before humanity, a time capsule from the dawn of the galaxy itself. Both possibilities are world-changing, both represent the single greatest discovery in the history of astronomy, and both are currently being obscured by a baffling policy of institutional secrecy. The ultimate truth remains unknown, hidden within the raw data that has not yet been shared. All eyes now turn to December 19th, when this object makes its closest pass to Earth, offering our best and perhaps last chance to solve the riddle. Will we see the glint of a manufactured hull or the pitted ancient surface of a traveler from a forgotten time? The final verdict awaits.